So let's start. So uh, hello everybody. Are you tired? Because I'm sure I'm. <laughs> um, but fortunately, we will be talking about a relaxing topic, which is, uh, or at least something I find relaxing, which is automation, because I love watching other things work while doing nothing. I really love that. But um, what is automation? Well, a few weeks ago, I found this tweet on Twitter. And I don't know if you, if you see it correctly, but basically it's a bot that detected a security vulnerability. Uh, another bot sent a PR for that. Another bot merged it. And the last one celebrated the merge. So it's basically code being generated without human intervention. And it's great. So um, I've I like this, this quote on uh, automation. Basically, it says that automation is a technology by which a process or procedure is performed with minimal human assistance. What I like about that is that you don't have to cut the human at completely. You just have to help him enough so that you, he can focus on what matters most. But for context, I have to tell you a few things about me. Uh, I'm an independent Scala developer. I currently work for Ingenico Group. Uh, in a team of seven developers, and we have uh, around 60 microservices to work with and 300 line of uh, 300k lines of code, which is both a lot and not so much. So it's a lot because for every seven people, we have a lot of things to maintain. But we are not so big that we can invest in a big team focused on doing things for us, like a big CI team on. We are, it's not, uh, Scala is not strategic enough so that we have like a big uh, architecture team to do correctly, correctly the stuff we need to have. And I have a confession to make is that it, I kind of like SBT. I'm sorry. <laughs> but, well, when you have 60 microservices, when you have to migrate 60 microservices, you think really hard about what you're going to use because if you if you migrate to something you don't like in the end, it takes time and it takes time to come back. So it's kind of annoying. And I, I actually have a demo for you. It's a bit weird to start with a demo, but as it takes around 10 minutes to run and it's a 20 minute presentation, if I don't do it now, you will see nothing. So I have this application where I have two versions of this application. Let's zoom in. If I find my, my mouse. And um, it basically, it basically tells you a joke. I have two versions. I have a staging version and a um, production version. And it basically tells you, hello. It tells you, hey, this joke was served to you by, uh, by, uh, by the, this application and what the, what the version is, OK? And um, so on, this, on the production version, I have an hello world. On the Staging version, I have Elos Fair IT. Fair IT is a, a conference in Krakow, which was a few weeks ago. But now it's sending, so we would like to say, hey, Elos Kalaio would make sense, right? And so I have a pipeline here that I will show you briefly. And I have prepared a merge request. And hopefully, if everything works, at the end of this presentation, my pipeline here will have pushed this application into staging, not production, but into staging, right? So I have this change that you may or might not see, but basically change change Elos variety by Elos Scala.io. And everything is good. Tests are OK. So let's merge it. And we'll see if it works in around 10 minutes. Cross his finger. So the question is, now what's that we know what the automation is, the question is, what is our work, right? And so um, what? When we were wondering what is our work, we have to wonder what we do every day. And so I propose to you to try that around a story, right? In a, in a company far away, a long time, uh, not so long time ago, uh, there was Bob, or call him, we call, call him anyway, any name, but when I don't know how to call someone, I call him Bob. I could have a really funny story about that, but that's for another, that's another matter. And Bob arrived, like, so he arrived at work around 11, right, early in the morning. 
And the first thing it do is it starts to code this feature. And when he has it done with this feature, he push it on master. But the problem is, after finishing this feature, uh, Alice come, and Alice is not happy with Bob because, hey, every the test didn't pass. So, what can Bob do? Well, you answer to Alice, while well, they work on my machine. <laughs> and so, the problem is that that's basically the most basic thing you can do with a, a correct CI system, basic correct automation is to have um, a common environment where you you uh, run the test, and this common environment becomes uh, one which becomes a source of truth, and so you have one source of truth for your whole team. So of course, nothing fancy here. Everything, uh, this thing you do all the time, you use just SBT, SBT test to run your test. You can use SBT Docker Compose to run uh, Docker Compose before, before uh, running your test if you need that, that. If you need, for example, a, a database, and you or you can use the Docker IT Scala to uh, run Docker before running your test. So now Bob has fixed uh, the problem and is ready to do another thing he do all the time. He will review a PR, but then he finds that. <laughs> Oops, someone probably formatted the code base in his PR. Right, great. The junior did probably just forgot to miss to set correctly the formatter and just ended up formatting the whole code base, which makes sense. So let's talk a little bit with code formatting. So at the moment, the de facto standard is Scala, is Scala FMT. It will just format things. It might not like it, but at least it's coherent. There is a lot of debate around that. I think it's probably uh, people drowning in a glass of water. But uh, my, my two cents about that is that uh, if your formatter does not format, if, if your code is has to be indented in the right, correct way to be understandable, the problem might not be the formatter. Uh, I will leave it at that. That's my two cents on it. You might hate me for that. Anyway, um, so Bob comes back, and in production, everything broke. Fire everywhere, servers crashed. So when Bob come back to his desk for a coffee break for, from his coffee break the first one in the morning of course and there is a, a gang of ops guys and they don't like when their server break and they come and they're like hey something something is broken fix it so bob investigate and it's like oh oops option dot get and the question is wouldn't it be great if we could eliminate complete sets of error with just one tool, right? It would be awesome, no? The truth is we can. It's called linting. And the thing is that in Scala, you have a lot of choice in linting. The Scala compiler is really, you, if you ask him nicely, it can become really, really annoying. So the best way to do that is just to bring SBT tuple cat. It will just bundle. A lot of depend a lot of uh, Scala co compiler option into your uh, into your build and you're just done with it. So, it, but you have to be prepared to face uh, the full power of Scala compiler. You might not be ready. You can also use scapegoat, uh, which is nice because it generates reports that uh, you can push into Sonar, or you can use Watch Remover, which basically does the same things as the Scala compiler itself, plus uh, uh, the same the same ID, which will break your build, but you can prevent uh, people from using features with which they will just hurt themselves. So, you know, it's like putting uh, protection in your uh, power outlets for babies, but just for developers. So now that everything is fixed, uh, Bob takes the code, put it in a USB key, and give it to the ops guy. Why do you find it funny? But guys, it's 2019. We we, we don't burn CDs anymore. <laughs> So, packaging. So, one of my favorite um, SBT function is SBT native packager. Basically, it just packages everything in every in every Scala pro program in approximately every way you can want to package it. 
you just zip, Debian, RPM, Docker. I don't I think there is even something for Arc Linux here. So basically, if you, if you find it how to configure it, you're, you're done for, for packaging. Publishing, of course, it's already bound on in SBT. You can uh, publish it uh, with, uh, on, on Sonatype, with SBT Sonatype. You have, um, if you don't want to set up a Nexus, you can push on S3, which is really convenient on some aspects. You just put this uh, FM SB3 S3 resolver and you can just push into an uh, S3 bucket, which is pretty, pretty awesome because it's basically zero setup. But it well, didn't help because the problem is still not fixed. But why? Well, it turns out that the version was A9D6DC7B instead of version 2D1C0C3C. Well, the problem is Git, Git Sha1 um, does not make for a really great um, version number. So let's talk about versioning. So still broken, of course. So basically, you have two way of doing things. I will know. I will. I really don't like the first one, so that's why it's not even on my slide. That you have SBT release plugin, which is really annoying because it creates a, a whole lot of commits and basically pollutes your uh, commit log with things that are basically useless. Or you can do the other way around: is that basically you derive your version from your Git repository. So SBT Dinver basically. What it does is, uh, is that if it will uh, react retroactively uh, compute a version based on your on where you are on your uh, your uh, Git history. So basically, if you are on a tag, you, it will just say take that. And so if you are on tag v.1.2, you will have the version 1.2. If you're uh, on uh, two commits from the version 1.2, it will be version 1.2 plus two uh, dash uh, the SHA of the commit. And basically, you do the other way around. So basically, you uh, you express everything you can uh, with Git operations. So releasing is now pushing a Git tag, which is really convenient because usually CI system understand really well Git events, and they probably they usually don't understand really well uh, SBT release plugin. And so one of the most uh, powerful tool in the Scala ecosystem is definitely Scala Stewart. So if you don't know it. If you take only one takeaway, just check that. So basically, what it will, what Scala Stewart do is that it monitors your code. You, you make it run. It will just pull your code, check if there is dependency updates, and create a pull request for you. So that's uh, one of the tools that was used in the tweet at the beginning. So maintaining uh, a lot of microservices is really hard. A lot of projects is really hard, and just um, maintaining maintaining dependencies is particularly hard, but you still want to do it because if you don't, at some point you will end up with 10 version, like, 10 version, you will have to upgrade 10 version, which is probably something, not something you want to do. And the problem is just maintaining things up to date takes time. And if you don't want to invest that, just put that and you're pretty much done. You just have to click merge, which is pretty cool. So, um, the problem, uh, so yeah, let's check that. Might not yet, but let's see if it did. So my, hopefully it has run. Yeah, it's still running. Okay, we'll see a little bit later after questions then. I'm still sweating. So, um, the problem you have, like for example, this takes around. Uh, I have a, a CI uh, system that um, tests uh, the formata, formatting, um, linting, uh, push uh, reports. I could show you the code is, pu is uh, publicly uh, available, so you can just check it and ask me questions afterwards uh, on Twitter and GitLab. And anyway, I will give you the, the URL. Um, it takes around 10 minutes. So the question is, uh, which is pretty slow, but it does a lot of things. So you don't have to do this thing, which is pretty cool. So the question is, uh, how can you do things better? And usually, uh, when you want to do things faster, you have a free way of doing things. You can either do less, uh, paralle parallelize, or do better. Uh, do less, you don't want to do that, because if you do less than by, by this machine, do less, then you do more, which is probably something not something you want. 
but uh, you can parallelize, so uh, ma machine time is cheap. So when you are designing an auto any automation pipeline, optimize for human time, not machine time. I mean, if I have to take to spend like, I don't know, uh, currently I think it's like for 10 cents of, uh, of a dollar for a mach one hour of a machine on Amazon, so it's like much cheaper than one hour of an engineer, so optimize for human time. And parallelizing means that you will probably waste a bit of resor computing resources, but you will probably gain a lot of human time. Um, one thing that is not currently possible, but I really hope it becomes possible, uh, is using Bloop in your CI system. So Bloop is um, basically you keep a, compi uh, a Java comp uh, Scala compiler warm, and you could keep a JVM warm. And so basically everything goes much faster. Be basically, instead of having an SBT command that you run and then you have to start SBT, which takes basically three minutes. Uh, remember that I said I like SBT. <laughs> and uh, you keep a, a daemon running that basically uh, you communicate with this daemon and so you don't have startup times, you don't have, uh, you keep your G JVM warm with previous compilation, which is much better in terms of her performance. And if it, it makes a big difference in your, uh, uh, desktop environment, your, your development laptop. But I think it will probably make even more of a difference in something like CI system where uh, you really, you really um, every second you win is basically a par uh, multiplied by the number of jobs, multiplied by the number of project, multiplied, basically it multiplies really fast. So hopefully some, sometime soon we'll be able to use Bloop in our CI system. My conclusion is that uh, you should e always take the time to gain time and never do things by hand if you can avoid <laughs> it, if, uh, especially repetitive things. And that's pretty much it. Thank you. And if you have any questions. <laughs> Before question, I will try, I will hope that it actually worked. And yes, it did. So no, hopefully it should say hello, Scalaio. Come on, work. Maybe suspense is killing me. Maybe not. <laughs> Trust me, it works. Yeah. Oh, yay. Um, everything is available on uh, on this so this project. So you can just if you have things you can you 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 are interested in, you can just check it uh, afterward and ping me on any. Oh, sorry. Uh, thanks for the talk. Um, I use Color Steward in open source projects, but can you use it in repos that are not public? Yes, you can, and that's awesome. You, it's not a problem. You basically do the same things that you would do in a, in a, in an open source. Uh, so the only thing is different is that it's your uh, own repo.md and you have to maintain it, which is logical. But we we have started using it and it's really awesome. It was with with GitLab at least. So my question isn't necessarily about the technology; it's about the people. Um, where I work, we automate quite a lot of our builds and autom like automatically de deploy the production. There's a culture though, when something goes wrong, it's not their problem. So is there any tools or techniques you've come across around actually people owning that merge request and deployment? S and necessarily fixing their own problem? <laughs> so that's a good question. So, so I don't think uh, automation is li and, uh, and appropriation of the code is uh, are linked. I mean, you can have uh, really poorly automated stuff and still have people that don't care about what goes to production. So I would say that it's probably unlinked. But I have uh, for a rule that if you don't want somebody to make a mistake, you just don't get give him the possibility of making this mistake. Um, I don't uh, personally trust the idea that you can um, have people that are, s not that people are not serious enough, but you know, this idea that if you're serious enough, you will not have this problem. 
given the right context, anybody will make a mistake. And if you don't want this, you really don't want this mistake, you just don't give the possibility of making it. So auto my, my idea is that automation helps with that. Uh, no. Uh, let's be honest, things will break in production and it's probably not going to stop anytime soon and you still will still need people to uh, fix it and be uh, conscientious enough to just take matter in their hand and improve stuff. I'm, op I'm hoping it responds to your ans uh, qu uh, an answer to your question. Last question. Thank you then.